The Great Depression was the worst economic crisis in modern history, lasting from 1929 until the beginning of World War II in 1939. The causes of the Great Depression included slowing consumer demand, mounting consumer debt, decreased industrial production and the rapid and reckless expansion of the U.S. stock market. When the stock market crashed in October 1929, it triggered a crisis in the international economy, which was linked via the gold standard. A rash of bank failures followed in 1930, and as the Dust Bowl increased the number of farm foreclosures, unemployment topped 20% by 1933. Presidents Herbert Hoover and Franklin D. Roosevelt tried to stimulate the economy with a range of incentives, including Roosevelt's New Deal programs, but ultimately it took the manufacturing production increases of World War II to end the Great Depression. What caused the Great Depression? Throughout the 1920s, the U.S. economy expanded rapidly, and the nation's total wealth more than doubled between 1920 and 1929, a period dubbed the Roaring Twenties. The stock market, centered at the New York Stock Exchange on Wall Street in New York City, was the scene of reckless speculation, where everyone from millionaire tycoons to cooks and janitors poured their savings into stocks. As a result, the stock market underwent rapid expansion, reaching its peak in August 1929. By then, production had already declined and unemployment had risen, leaving stock prices much higher than their actual value. Additionally, wages at that time were low, consumer debt was proliferating, the agricultural sector of the economy was struggling due to drought and falling food prices and banks had an excess of large loans that could not be liquidated. The American economy entered a mild recession during the summer of 1929, as consumer spending slowed and unsold goods began to pile up, which in turn slowed factory production. Nonetheless, stock prices continued to rise, and by the fall of that year had reached stratospheric levels that could not be justified by expected future earnings. Stock market crash of 1929 on October 24, 1929, as nervous investors began selling overpriced shares in mass, the stock market crash that some had feared happened at last. A record 12.9 million shares were traded that day, known as Black Thursday. Meanwhile, the country's industrial production had dropped by half. Bread lines, soup kitchens, and rising numbers of homeless people became more and more common in America's towns and cities. Farmers couldn't afford to harvest their crops and were forced to leave them rotting in the fields while people elsewhere starved. In 1930, severe droughts in the southern plains brought high winds and dust from Texas to Nebraska, killing people, livestock, and crops. The Dust Bowl inspired a mass migration of people from farmland to cities in search of work. In the fall of 1930, the first of four waves of banking panics began as large numbers of investors lost confidence in the solvency of their banks and demanded deposits in cash, forcing banks to liquidate loans in order to supplement their insufficient cash reserves on hand. Bank runs swept the United States again in the spring and fall of 1931 and the fall of 1932, and by early 1,933 thousands of banks had closed their doors. In the face of this dire situation, Hoover's administration tried supporting failing banks and other institutions with government loans. The idea was that the banks in turn would loan to businesses, which would be able to hire back their employees. Hoover, a Republican who had formerly served as U.S. Secretary of Commerce, believed that government should not directly intervene in the economy and that it did not have the responsibility to create jobs or provide economic relief for its citizens. In 1932, however, with the country mired in the depths of the Great Depression and some 15 million people unemployed, Democrat Franklin D. Roosevelt won an overwhelming victory in the presidential election. By Inauguration Day, March 4, 1933, every U.S. state had ordered all remaining banks to close at the end of the fourth wave of banking panics, and the U.S. Treasury didn't have enough cash to pay all government workers. Nonetheless, FDR, as he was known, projected a calm energy and optimism, famously declaring the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Roosevelt took immediate action to address the country's economic woes, first announcing a four-day bank holiday during which all banks would close so that Congress could pass reform legislation and reopen those banks determined to be sound. 
He also began addressing the public directly over the radio in a series of talks, and these so-called fireside chats went a long way toward restoring public confidence. During Roosevelt's first 100 days in office, his administration passed legislation that aimed to stabilize industrial and agricultural production, create jobs, and stimulate recovery. In addition, Roosevelt sought to reform the financial system, creating the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation FDIC, to protect depositors' accounts in the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, to regulate the stock market and prevent abuses of the kind that led to the 1929 crash. Among the programs and institutions of the New Deal that aided in recovery from the Great Depression was the Tennessee Valley Authority TVA, which built dams and hydroelectric projects to control flooding and provide electric power to the impoverished Tennessee Valley region, and the Works Progress Administration WPA, a permanent jobs program that employed 8.5 million people from 1935 to 1943. When the Great Depression began, the United States was the only industrialized country in the world without some form of unemployment insurance or social security. In 1935, Congress passed the Social Security Act, which for the first time provided Americans with unemployment, disability, and pensions for old age. After showing early signs of recovery beginning in the spring of 1933, the economy continued to improve throughout the next three years, during which real GDP, adjusted for inflation, grew at an average rate of 9% per year. A sharp recession hit in 1937, caused in part by the Federal Reserve's decision to increase its requirements for money in reserve. Though the economy began improving again in 1938, this second severe contraction reversed many of the gains in production and employment and prolonged the effects of the Great Depression through the end of the decade. Depression-era hardships fueled the rise of extremist political movements in various European countries, most notably that of Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime in Germany. German aggression led war to break out in Europe in 1939, and the WPA turned its attention to strengthening the military infrastructure of the United States, even as the country maintained its neutrality. African Americans in the Great Depression One-fifth of all Americans receiving federal relief during the Great Depression were black, most in the rural South. But farm and domestic work, two major sectors in which black workers were employed, were not included in the 1935 Social Security Act, meaning there was no safety net in times of uncertainty. Rather than fire domestic help, private employers could simply pay them less without legal repercussions. And those relief programs for which African Americans were eligible on paper were rife with discrimination in practice since all relief programs were administered locally. Despite these obstacles, Roosevelt's Black Cabinet, led by Mary McLeod Bethune, ensured nearly every New Deal agency had a black advisor. The number of African Americans working in government tripled. Great Depression ends and World War II begins with Roosevelt's decision to support Britain and France in the struggle against Germany and the other Axis powers, defense manufacturing geared up, producing more and more private sector jobs. The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in December 1941 led to America's entry into World War II, and the nation's factories went back into full production mode. This expanding industrial production, as well as widespread conscription beginning in 1942, reduced the unemployment rate to below its pre-depression level. The Great Depression had ended at last, and the United States turned its attention to the global conflict of World War II. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe.